Hello everyone. Our message for this last Wednesday service is going to be about God's good purpose. And we're going to study the verse from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And the Bible tells us in this verse, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Now this verse from Romans chapter 8, verse 28 is what I call the old rocking chair verse. When things seem to be going wrong, when afflictions and problems seem to abound, we just climb by prayer into the lap of our Father and rock back and forth quoting this verse. And it is, it is there that the Holy Spirit reminds us that for those who love God and follow His purpose, God is using any and all things for the good. Now verse 28 begins with the words, and we know, which expresses and presupposes the knowledge of a faith and its practice. Now, the word know used here comes from the Greek word oida, which means a conscious recognition and understanding. And we can know of God's good purpose by the testimony of scriptures, the testimony of the Holy Spirit, and the testimony of prayer when God speaks to our lives. Even when things don't seem to be going very good at the time. There was a Sunday school teacher who was telling the well-known story of Abraham and his obedient preparation to sacrificing his son Isaac. As the story neared its climax, a little girl pleaded, Oh, please don't go on. The story is too terrible. However, another girl immediately said, Don't be silly. This is one of God's stories, and God's stories always come out right. Sometimes in our lives, we are like the first little girl, and and can only see the bad things that are happening right in front of us. And that's when we need to remind ourselves of the truth of the second little girl and what she said about God's good purpose, that he causes everything to work together for the good. That word causes comes from the Greek word synergeo, which means to cooperate and work together with. It is from this word that we get the word we use today of synergy, which the uh, online dictionary defines as the cooperation of organizations and or substances to produce a combined effect that is greater than the sum of their separate effects. God causes everything to come out right for his children who love him. And so those people who love God and follow his purposeful calling know that all things will work together for their good. I bet there's a few people listening to this message who do not need to look very far back in their lives to see some things that seem like disasters at the time, which actually worked out for the good. And we can probably remember some disappointments in our lives which ended up working out and instead to be great blessings. There really are many afflictions in this life which can actually be real blessings. This is because God is working ceaselessly, energetically, and purposefully on our behalf for the good. Now the preposition in the phrase for the good is the Greek word eis, which means for the result of good or that which is ultimately good. Because we know that all things, that not all things are good or are good for us. 
However, our Almighty Father can cause all things for our ultimate eternal good. And we can know this when we take a look at the next verse. Verse 29 tells us this, For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his Son, so that his Son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So verse 29 tells us what the for the good is from verse 28. God's good purpose for all of his children is to work towards a conformity to his son Jesus. Now, some people say that verse 29 states that God has foreordained or predestined his people already. However, if we take a close look at the Greek words prognosko and proorzito, which tell us that God knew and chose his people, we'll discover that God in his omniscience does know all possibilities. However, God desires for his people to willingly choose him and to be part of his family. And yet, because of that great love God has for us, he allows us to make that choice and does not actually predetermine that we will make that choice. Uh, scripture gives a great example of this. If we look back in the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament, chapter 18, verses 7 through 10, the Lord says this, If I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, but then that nation renounces its evil ways, I will not destroy it as I had planned. And if I announce that I will plant and build up a certain nation or kingdom, but then that nation turns to evil and refuses to obey me, I will not bless it as I said I would. Now, with all of this in mind, we need to understand that God working for the good of his children does not mean that all that happens to us is good. Evil is present in this world. However, God is able to turn every circumstance around for our long-range good. Our almighty and sovereign God can work everything even the evil and negative that occurs in our lives, into a positive purpose for his will for us. When I was a boy, I used to love being around my mom when she was baking. I loved to lick the stirring spoon when mom was baking a cake, and she had poured all the mixed ingredients into the cake pan and had them stirred up. Yum! Good stuff! Well, there was one occasion when Mom got called away from her baking project and she had all the ingredients set out. The flour, the sugar, the baking powder, the raw eggs, and the vanilla. But she hadn't yet mixed them together. Now, being my usual curious self at that age, I thought I would sample each one of those ingredients which made up that amazingly good cake. Yuck! Except for the sugar, they all tasted horrible. And I'm thinking to myself, what kind of dessert is that going to be? But Mom stirred all those yucky ingredients together, then baked the batter in the oven, and we had it for dessert. What happened? This stuff is good! Well, the day before at Catechism, we had talked about Jesus turning the water into wine, so I asked Mom if Jesus had done a miracle with her cake. Mom just laughed and told me that it was the combination of all the individually distasteful things that ended up producing such a tasty product. And folks, that's what God does in each of our lives. He takes all of the 
undesirable stresses in our lives, mixes them together, puts them under the heat of crisis, and then produces a very desirable and good result. Think of all the evil intent Joseph's brothers had for him in the Old Testament. However, after all was said and done, Joseph proclaims this in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. Folks, when things start looking bad, remember that God is good. Look beyond your immediate circumstances and trust God in His time to bring about His good purpose in your life. God can work all things for the good of Christians. Not only prosperity, but adversity. And not only joy and happiness, but also suffering and sadness. Years ago, there was a fishing fleet that had sailed out from a small harbor town on the east coast of Newfoundland. In the afternoon, there came up a great storm. When night settled down, not a single vessel of all the fleet had found its way into port. All night long, wives and mothers, children and, and sweethearts paced up and down the beach and they wrung their hands and called on God to save their loved ones. And then to add to the horror of the situation, one of the cottages caught fire. Since the men were all away, it was impossible to save the home. However, when the morning broke, to the joy of all, the entire fleet had found safe harbor in the bay. But there was one face which was a picture of despair. The wife of the man whose home had been destroyed in the fire. Meeting her husband as he landed, she cried, Oh, husband, we are ruined. Our home and all it contained was destroyed by the fire. However, the man exclaimed, Thank God for the fire. It was the light of our burning cottage that guided the whole fleet into port. Folks, we should be thankful that we serve a God who is sovereign, loving, all-wise, and all-powerful. Nothing frustrates him. Nothing stops him. And nothing escapes his attention. God can take all things, both good and bad, and work them all together for the benefit of his children. And even with all of the bad things happening through the coronavirus at this time, God is already working his good through people and organizations. Here's a neat poem I came across, which I hope will bring some insight for you. It's called, From His Hand. God knows, and even thus allows, those little things that irk. I trust his wisdom and his love, and let patience have its work. Though human means have brought a sting, I firmly take this stand. My loving Father holds the cup, so I take it from his hand. Now those who watch may wonder why these things do not disturb. I look right past the instrument and see my Lord superb. The trials which would lay me low must pass through his command. He holds the outstretched cup to me, so I take it from his hand. Now we're going to take a look at two conditions that are a prerequisite for whom God causes everything to work together for the good. Now, the first condition stated in verse 28 is that the verse applies to those who love God. And who are those who love God? John, or Jesus gives the answer in John chapter 14, verse 15, 
when our Lord and Savior says this, If you love me, obey my commandments. And what are Jesus' commandments? Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Loving God is the necessary condition for the promise of God for working all things for the good. If a person loves God, then they humbly trust and accept what their all-wise and all-loving Father God sends and gives to them. Think of it this way. A person may go to a doctor and be prescribed a course of treatment which at the time is unpleasant and possibly even painful. However, if this person trusts the wisdom and skill of the doctor, they will accept and follow through with the treatment that the doctor has prescribed for them. And the same is true for those who love God. Because if a person does not love and trust God, they will resent what happens to them and may well fight against God's will. It is only the person who loves and trusts God who will see that all things work together for the good. And that these things come from a Father who has a perfect wisdom, love, and power in working together in, in everything for the best for us. Now we need to understand that Romans chapter 8 verse 28 does not say that all things work together for the good for all people. There are many people in the world who live in open rebellion against God. And there are also other people who live in complete indifference to God's claim upon their lives. Remember that, that this chapter from the book of Romans has been contrasting those people who are living in God's spirit to those who are living in their sinful nature. And the only way we can be obedient to God is through His Holy Spirit. Just a couple verses earlier in Romans chapter 8, the Bible reminds us of this truth. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. Those who love God and are those who are filled with His Holy Spirit. So they keep His word and do His will. And Jesus states this truth Himself in John chapter 14, verse 21, where He says, Those who accept My commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. So the first condition for God to cause everything to work together for the good is that we are called to love God. The second condition is that believers are called according to His purpose for them. Now notice that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who are called according to his purposes, not ours. That word called comes from the Greek word kletos, which means an invitation and a summons. This word has a specific context of an invitation and a summons from God. So when verse 28 says, the called, it is referring to those who have received, accepted, and heeded God's call for them. However, notice the purpose of God's call. Verse 28 clarifies that God's call is according to His purpose for them. God calls each one of His believers with an invitation that has a purpose. So the called are those who accept the privileges and responsibilities to which they were invited so that 
their lives will please and glorify God. People who are called and respond to God's invitation have a new perspective and a new mindset for the purpose of their life. They are trusting God and not life's treasures. They are looking for security in heaven and not on this earth. They are learning to accept and not resent pain and persecution because God is with them and working in them for his good purpose. Now, people who know God's call and purpose for their life live the words from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. The Bible tells us this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Folks, we don't always understand what God is doing, let alone even welcome it many times. And sometimes what God is doing doesn't have much to do with our own personal comfort. However, we do know that God is working all things for our supreme good so that God's good purpose for our lives can be fulfilled. So those who are professed followers of Jesus, who love him and are following his purpose for their life, should rest in a perfect confidence knowing God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. I just feel like a poem kind of mindset tonight. So here's another one for you that I hope, I hope you will receive and accept is God's purpose for your life. The easy roads are crowded and the level roads are jammed. The pleasant little rivers with the drifting folks are crammed. But off yonder where it's rocky, where you get a better view, you will find the ranks are thinning and the travelers are few. Where the going smooth and pleasant, you will always find the throng. For the many more's the pity seem to like to just drift along. But the steps that call for courage and the task that's hard to do in the end results in glory for the never wavering few. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your call upon our lives and the purpose that you have for each one of us. Lord, we are sorry when we whine and complain about things not going our way. And sometimes you even get the blame. Even though we have not been showing our love for you and have not been following the purpose you have for our lives, as the Bible tells us we should. Help us, Lord, to better understand and accept that because you love us so much, you are more than able to cause everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. And we pray this in the holy name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you his everlasting strength and peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.